work better, faster, and stronger, not harder. Work fat, work better, not that. Work smarter, not harder, definitely a personal motto of mine. We've got a takeaway document right here. So up on the screen right now, also on the board over there. We'll also be in the video. We'll also be emailed out later, blah, 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 that covers, hey, here's a quick overview of all the things we talked about today. So as an example, I got emailed asking about a course. Does anybody know what happens when you email one of us directly to ask about a course? Yes. What happens? It goes to the Leo box. Yeah, we immediately say, hey. It goes to everyone. Well, if you email us directly, it doesn't, which is why we always say, hey, thanks for reaching out to us, but I'm going to get back to you in a second. So what I'm using here is a thing called a canned response. Canned responses are a little add-on to Gmail, and what they allow you to do is prepare a bunch of statements and then just toss them in nice and easy. And we're going to CC Leo. Do that again. Yeah. One, two, three. That's it. I didn't even know there were dots down there. There you go. That's why we're doing this. And so we'll send that off. So one of the other things this works really well with is filters and labels. So this automatically added in a thing that says, hey, this is an email for Leo alert. And then if Brian ever asks me, hey, how many times do we get emails like that? I can quickly check and be like, oh, yeah, 40,000 in the last 10 weeks. I'm not going to go into labels and how to set all that up. But another tool I want to point out is this little tool up here called G Suite Training. Called what? G Suite Training. So this is an add-on specifically for Google Chrome. Oop. And what it does is on every single Google tool, so we're talking Gmail, Sheets, Google Docs, Google Drive, all that kind of jazz, you can open it up and it'll give you tutorials specifically on this. So these can be little Gmail videos. Is the email client that is part of G Suite. Gmail is and Google's sometimes email they'll actually pop open a uh, little cursor that tells you, hey, click on this thing, and then click on that thing, blah, blah, blah. And what I find really handy about that is, say I forget how to do something like labels. It'll automatically tell me, hey, here's how you use labels. I'm actually like Google certified and whatnot, so I've got a fancy paper on my wall. I still use this all the time, because there's 40,000 different things. It's easy to forget. Any questions so far? Yeah, how in depth are those? They're pretty dang in depth. Yeah. Like you can find out pretty much everything you need to know, um, and then after that, you're probably trying to find an answer that doesn't exist. <laughs> this is only on the uh, Chrome. So this is specifically for Chrome. Um, most of the tools that I'm covering have some sort of support. Otherwise, I can't promise this one though, because Google Chrome is a specific Google tool, so they might not put it up. So with that canned responses, how does someone set that up? Like, is it through the settings or so the easiest way? At that link, it's got instructions on how to set that up, which is specifically, it's a little complicated. You go up to the gear, then you click settings, then you click advanced, and then you turn on canned responses. I don't expect anybody to remember that series of four steps, which is why I wrote it down for you. Oh, you can open an email and then get the little dots. And then you get the little dots, yeah. Yeah. How did you get the G Suite training to show up? G Suite training yeah, is, yes. yeah, that's a uh, Chrome add-on. So if you just Google G Suite training or the uh, link that I've got, all of the different titles or links, you click on that, it'll take you directly to it. Yeah. <coughs> Work it smarter here. Thank you. Cool. All right, so I'm going to hop over to... Leo Learn, which is where I would have gotten that email. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then I'm going to respond to that. And this is just an example, so I just need to put in some dummy text. It doesn't really matter what I put. So another tool that I use all the time when I just need a bunch of dummy text is a thing called a lorem ipsum generator. Is anybody familiar with lorem ipsum text? A couple nods. 
So yeah, this just gives you a bunch of essentially Latin. We're going to say I want this much Latin, and we're going to post that in. And every time we go in there, it gives you a bunch of extra text. This is really helpful for when you're designing stuff, and you're like, all right, I want to see what it looks like when there's text here. From a couple feet away, you can't even tell that it's not actual words. And there's another. So you can use canned responses. These work really well in a shared inbox because then everybody has access to exactly the same things that you're going to say, which just makes sure that everybody you know sort of talks the same when you've got things that are really structured. But we didn't bother to put our um, email signatures in there because we have another tool which is called Auto Text Expander, and what it does is this. Now watch real quick. Ta-da! So that, similar to canned responses, is a tool where I've loaded in a bunch of text. And in this case, you'll notice there's also an image there. And that lives uh, right up here as another Chrome extension. So the handy thing there is this is built into Google Chrome. So any website that I go to, I can still use this. So if I go to eClass, I can quickly toss in stuff there. Um, as I mentioned, that, there's an image there. This actually takes in HTML, so you can even put in videos or other such embedded things if you want to. All good so far? Cool. Yeah, this is sort of lightning round of, hey, here's all the different things Alex uses all the time. So we'll send that off. Blah, blah, blah. And this is just me responding to myself. But say I want to shoot an email off to Amanda because this guy keeps emailing me even though 40,000 times we told him, hey, send it to a different spot. And I'm feeling cheeky, so <laughs> we're going to toss in a GIF. If it loads. This is a tool called Giphy. Right? So, GIFs are real nice when you want to make things a little bit more casual, but you don't want to spend too many words on it. Could so, you one more time? yeah. So, Giphy okay. is yet another add-on tool. Use it. <laughs> so, one thing I will. So, one thing I will caution about Giphy. Oh, so I first of all, an email to Helen <laughs> <laughs> that has something kind of funny on it. Well, you can do so that. So, how do I do that? Oh, you'd install you Giphy. And then you send an email to Helen. So two things about Helen. Yeah. Yeah. So what it does is um, just the front page is, hey, here's the most recent ones. Um, just based off of this, see if you can guess what day it is today. Yeah, it's Pi Day. Um, every Monday you'll get you know image of Garfield. Every Friday you'll get you know images of people being excited about Friday. Uh, I will note, these are all user generated, so they may or may not be appropriate to send to your coworkers. Use caution. Anywho. Any questions so far about what we've gone over? So that was just that little colored square up there. Yeah. These are, yeah, so for those not familiar, these are just Chrome add-ons. Chrome has a lot of different add-ons, as do other web browsers. Most of the things, like I said, that we're showing you, hopefully you can find in other situations. The big takeaway is to know that these sort of things exist. If you're like, hey, I never really thought about having text expand that easily, it's not to be like, hey, use this exact tool, because there might be better tools out there. Mm -hmm. so, Alex? Yeah. So the, uh, the add ons aren't um, on your Chrome right now, so you will probably have to download them. Yeah, um, exactly. From a different place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but one real handy note this laptop right here is not my computer. When what I'm really going to suggest is if you do, do decide to use things like this, or even if you don't, sign into your web browser. Chrome, Firefox, I believe even Internet Explorer, if you sign into a web browser and then you sign in somewhere else, it automatically pulls all of this stuff for you. So you can be up and running on a different computer in 30 seconds. So where to upload them from? Sorry? What, like those tools yeah. to be uploaded to my Chrome, to my account of Chrome. Where to get them? Where? Yeah. So on that takeaway document, it's got links to all of them. And most of these, if you just Google them, like you Google Chrome add-on or, or Giphy add-on, it'll pop up. It means you have to know what it's called. Exactly. Hence, this workshop and the takeaway document. Um, 
Okay, we're done with this. I don't need it anymore. We're going to say, yeah, get rid of it for a little bit. This thing right here is called Boomerang. With the free version of Boomerang, you get to do this 10 times a month. If you pay some more money, you get to do this as many times as you like. But what you can say is, take this email out of my inbox. I don't want to have to worry about it. Send it back to me at this specific time or in this many hours. If you're like, I'm not going to have the information for this until tomorrow morning at 8 AM, say, hey, I want it at that time. And it's even clever enough to pick up, actually, yeah, tomorrow, 8 AM. Ta-da. And there we go. So tomorrow morning, I'll get that email for myself. One other feature that the Boomerang has, and I always feel a little guilty using this, there's a pause inbox. Every weekend, I do not get your emails. Because every Friday, I say, hey, pause this inbox until Monday at 8.20 AM. And then I get nothing from my work email, because it's all put on hold. If you find yourself having difficulty not responding to emails at 9 PM, I highly recommend checking this out. And if you feel like handing them money, you can have this set up automatically, and you can have auto response stuff. But it's easy enough just to remember how to do that on Fridays. So back to our email example. You responded to that, but for some reason, we feel like printing it. And we're like, OK, the printer's not working. Let's figure out how to fix that. So I'm going to open up a new tab. How many people get this when they open up a new tab? I kind of figured it would be zero. So this is another add-on, and this one I love. It's called Tabby Cat. So what it does is it gives you randomly generated, friendly-looking cats. Some of them <laughs> don't like being padded. Some of them love being padded. You get little goodies. And if you feel like spending money, you get so many different kinds of pets. But I did not feel like shelling out a dollar for a bunny. I'm good with just regular cats. So we're going to head in over to eClass. And hmm, wouldn't you know it, I've forgotten what my eClass password is. This is a tool called LastPass. LastPass is what's called a password manager. Most of your brow most browsers are built in with little password managers. You probably noticed they've been like, hey, do you want me to save this password? Um, the answer should always be no, never do that, because the browser-based ones are really insecure. They're also not cross-platform. So if, you, if you're used to using Chrome, you sign in on Firefox, you then don't have access to anything. LastPass is available on all of the browsers and also on mobile, which is super duper handy. And you get to share passwords with other people. And all you need is one real secure master password. So what happens if you get that password? Then you're hosed. <laughs> then what? Then you're hosed. There is a password recovery um, thing, but it does delete a lot of the passwords. So essentially, don't forget that big master I did. password. Hmm? I did. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. The, the whole point of it is that you can put everything under one password, but all of that stuff is now supposed to be real secured by that one. Anywho, and as you'll notice, it just autofills stuff, so you can save a little bit of typing. So how saving passwords there is safer than uh, saving them in the browser? Like remember Because my they put it under a whole bunch of military-grade encryption mm -hmm. is the short answer. There's more answers that I do not fully understand. That's, yeah, the best I can give you. OK, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that's a paid, paid service, right? Nope. Oh. LastPass is free. And LastPass Mobile is also free. And if you don't have the extension and you don't have it on your browser, you can even go to the LastPass website and then get your passwords that way. There have been a couple times where I've been standing in line for something and realized that I don't have my password for whatever service I'm about to walk up to a counter for, and I just looked it up there. So I mentioned that with um, Auto Text Expander, you get access to it wherever you are, not just to happen to be on Google. So I can quickly type that in, and ta-da, there we go. So this 
is my email one. I'm just going to give ourselves some space. This is the response I give when I'm on eClass. Can anybody spot the difference? No, that, that's a silly thing to ask. They're, they're very similar. The differences are real small. I don't know about you, but I deal with a lot of things on a fairly regular basis where I have to see if there's tiny differences in text. Like we'll hear, hey, this quiz has been updated. All right, I get to check out 60 questions, each with four answers, to check out which things have now changed. Humans are really bad at that. Computers are really good at that. So another tool that I use pretty regularly is a thing called a diff check. So this is one of many services that are all fairly similar. And what they do is you take some text, you put it on that side. You take some other text, put it on that side, and then you say, hey, oh, look, it's that block that's different. That's it. It's not terribly complicated, but it saves a lot of time, and it makes things a lot less error-prone. Um, anytime it comes to updating OHS stuff, it's comparing 40 numbers against 40 other different section numbers, and it's always very easy to get confused about which one's 40.5 and which one's supposed to be 30 section 1. That sort of stuff. We've covered a lot of tools so far pretty quickly. Do we have any questions? So this one... You just type in uh, the name in the address bar, or so, you need to download yeah, the, this, as an app? Yeah, this is just a web page. Just a okay. Yeah, so this, no installations, no downloads, no nothing like that. If you feel like paying the money, you'll get access to character by character recognition. This just does words. So even if one of them, for example, has an extra space in there. So that was just me tapping space on line 15. It would be like, hey, something weird is going on here. So it doesn't store the data, though. It does, doesn't store the data, right. which most of the time you probably don't need. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a quick on-fly check from exactly. two emails or whatever is the text. Yeah, just two big sections. But Microsoft Word does it for two documents comparing two documents, yeah. but that's just app. Like exactly. It's software specific. Yeah, so I can't speak to everybody, but I know pretty commonly I'll be comparing things in E-Class versus things in a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. There's not much in the way of tools that talk between those two things. Right, so we were going to check, we were going to try and print that off and our printer broke and I forgot to talk about that scenario. Okay, back to that. Say we're like, we're going to go down to, hey, how to fix common computer problems. So, do your tech blogs normally look like this? My money's on, they normally look like this, and then they load some more of this, and then they put in a bunch of other stuff. Oh, it's still going. So this is a tool that's pretty common nowadays, and in fact, a lot of different websites have ways to circumnavigate this, but it's called Adblock Plus, or just Adblock. There's a couple different ones out there. And what this does is it stops things that are recognized as being ads from loading up. This makes reading things a lot cleaner, and it makes things loading be a lot cleaner. You notice this video on the bottom right, that popped up whether or not I had it on. It's not a perfect system. And websites have gotten pretty good at trying to work around it in some ways. And even some of the ad blockers have started being like, okay, we're only going to put in the unobtrusive ads. But if you pay us even more money, then we'll stop doing that as well. So they themselves have kind of become advertisers in a weird way. Mm -hmm. But we can go from this. to this pretty easily. And we can even be like, hey, I want you to add, I want you to also block this. Let's see if it'll do it. Well, we were helpful. Okay. It only does so much. <laughs> 
So if you're not using Adblock, I highly recommend it. The other thing worth considering is um, some websites we, we don't care about. They're going to do OK. Other websites, which are maybe smaller, which are maybe like, hey, we're running off of donations, maybe consider not blocking their ads, because that's how they make money. We like them. That's about it. Mm -hmm. this, adding this ad block. OK, so we, the idea is to speed up the process of loading page. Okay, speed so up and we do it. We do it by adding another software running on the background. <laughs> Weird, Which right? Which is a weird, like yeah. we're slowing down machine to speed up machine. Yeah, um, we're not. We're more saying, hey, don't read these things. So when your web page loads, it gets a whole bunch of text to read through. What we're just saying is, hey, this bit, skip that. Don't bother reading that. Don't load these images. Yeah, but that videos. software is working in the background. Yep. And it's eating resources to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's still beneficial. Yes. Like the balance is positive. Yeah. Okay. It, when it comes to things that have a whole whack ton of ads, like that page we were on, there were... Oh, by the way, if you press Control-Shift-T, it just opens up the last tab you're on. So that's super handy. So ad block is blocked. 56, 74, 84, 90, 96. 96 different elements. Also, it's based on the distraction, right? Not yes. Else, so. Which, for me, I find is the biggest benefit. Yeah. So that was all that I had prepared in terms of having fun scenarios. The rest of this is going to be, hey, here's this tool, here's this tool, here's this tool. So if you're like, hey, this block of text, I need to put something here, but just doing an Ipsum generator is kind of boring. There's another website that I use called Meet the Ipsums, which is a whole bunch of different Ipsum-ish generators. Say, hey, I need me some corporate speak. Yeah, give me four paragraphs of just corporate gibberish. And we can then take this and we can talk about how to capitalize on low hanging fruit to identify a ballpark value added to data test. Oh, value added activity to data test. Without plagiarizing. Yeah. Yeah, this is just free to use. They're happy for you to take it. All of this is gibberish. That I'm reasonably confident doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Or say you're like, hey, uh, oh, Startup Ipsum is also pretty fun. It's you know pretty similar. Um, Pirates, good stuff. Uh, Monocle, Ooh, let's have a look. And some of these haven't been updated in a little while, and they have since broke. Ta -da. There's not a lot of times you're going to need to put in slightly coherent dummy text, but it's fun to know that these things exist. Okay. One of the tools that my team uses, which for some reason is not just popping up there, but anyways, is called Asana. Or Asana. I'm not sure which. I hope it's Asana because that's what I've been pronouncing it mentally for forever. And what this is, is it's, it's uh, task management and project management software. So this can be, or it's a web app, so you don't have to download anything. You do have to sign up. So this can be pretty helpful just for yourself, where I'm like, hey, I've got this list of tasks that I need to keep in mind. What do I have? All right, sort of stuff. Or if you're like, hey, we're doing bigger things. We need to keep track of things. Hmm. This, is what a, this is what a finished project looks for us, which was the instructor handbook, which is made out of all of these tasks. It's set up so you've got boards. You also have lists. The general idea is make tasks. You assign them to people. People get stuff done. Chances are pretty good you're already using something similar to this, but having a single spot where you do this is super handy. There's a bunch of other similar services out there. Mostly I'm just saying, hey, these things exist. Questions? Cool. All right. So say we're shooting off an email to somebody, and we need to tell them, hey, here's this you're saying, their specific part of this thing isn't working for me, and it's really hard to describe. What's an easy way to send an e email that shows something without explicitly typing it out? Screenshots. Yeah, screenshots are great. Not that button, this button. 
This is a tool called GreenShot. GreenShot means that whenever I hit print screen, it automatically pulls this up so I can grab a window, and then it gives me a few different options of what I want to do with this. One of the really handy things is that it has a built-in image editor, which, if you've ever been on our website, ext-leo.ca, you'll notice that all of our screenshots look pretty similar. That's because we've standardized it across our unit, and whenever you edit something, you can then save it in a re-editable format, so if you need to change what you've got highlighted, it's easy enough to do. So we're going to say, hey, I'm having an issue with this section. Oh, that's real thin. We're going to beef that up a bit. And also over here. Copy that. Paste. Ta-da. Before I knew about this, I was always just doing print screen, tossing it into paint, circling things, which always worked terribly because as soon as I needed to move something, everything went wrong. It's is just my nature. This is actually an installed program. So, Greenshot, they've got it for both uh, Windows and Apple. Windows is free, Apple's two bucks because Apple charges the money to put it in their little download store. Questions? Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Because print screen, because I have two screens, it takes a shot of both. Mm. Yeah. And I don't need the picture of my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And there, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's fantastic. Did you, you need that four thousand pixel wide image? Yeah. Uh, there is one more uh, like yeah. internal tool. If you uh, okay, print screen. And it gives you both of the screens. Yeah. But if you go Alt Print Screen, it will only copy the active window of your. Oh, like yeah. If you have Word, let's say, or like some. It will include all the buttons at the bottom, like icons at the bottom of the frame, okay. but only on the active window. Mm -hmm. oh. If you have like 10 of them. Yeah, Windows has a built in, I think they call it a snipping tool. Yeah. Um, Apple has a built in, it's actually a pretty functional tool, but it requires you to remember about five different hotkeys in order to use the different versions of I want to snip this spot and then save it to my desktop sort of thing. What's really and handy. Can, and you can't frame it like that. Yeah, what's really handy is the fact that you can immediately add in circles, which is also great if somebody sends you a hangout that's like, hey, I'll be there in 10 minutes, and then you can send them one back that says, you sent this 12 minutes ago. That sort of thing. A um, couple more things. Okay, so who doesn't use Google Drive? Okay, we got one. Sure. Okay, you can just plug your ears for the next 30 seconds. <laughs> who uses Google Drive but wishes it was more accessible from their just like desktop file manager like this? Eh. Okay, we use that pretty frequently, which is why we use a tool called Google Drive File Stream. So this is another program they need to install, also available Windows and Mac. Um, eons ago, like three years ago, there was another tool called, I think it was just Google Drive for Desktop. And what it did is it, is it actually um, synced everything between your desktop and your Google Drive. So you could specify, hey, don't do these folders, but it would still be like, all right, we're in the middle of downloading three terabytes. File stream's pretty neat in that it only downloads what you explicitly ask it to. So you can go through things and it'll have all those folders available. But it doesn't actually have any of this stuff downloaded. So this is all taking up no space until I specifically say, hey, download this thing. The advantage of that is, once again, you can sit down at a computer you haven't used. If you can, if, if you can install this, you do that, and then you've got access to everything within seconds, instead of having to wait hours for everything to sync up. The other advantage of this is you can really easily copy and paste folders, which we do all the heck in time, and there is not really an easy way to do that within Google Drive. One caveat, for whatever reason, it does not allow you to do that with actual Google Documents. Any questions? And, and, yeah, where to get it? Where to get it? Once again, it's on the that list. Means, yeah. That one's actually weirdly confusing to find. Mm -hmm. Involves going through some help docs. I don't know why they buried it, but it's there. Yeah. I was just going to say one of the other uh, really huge benefits and one of the reasons we use it a lot, uh, quite often, 
is, let's say you uh, work with a lot of uh, Microsoft Word documents. If you open it through Google File Stream, you edit it, save it, and then you're done. Everything will automatically sync back up to uh, your Google Drive space. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to download it onto your computer, work on it, and then re-upload it, which can save you quite a bit of time. And uh, I'm going to open this. Oh. They added in another feature recently. So if we look at this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Time for a break. Everybody, okay, stand up. <laughs> a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Take a break. Stand up. That's the water. Wait a second. Is this an add-on? <laughs> yes. This is a Chrome add-on. <laughs> What's it called? This is called break time, yeah. or break timer rather. Yeah, okay, I love that. Yeah, break timer is, as you can imagine, super handy for when you accidentally forget to not stand up for three hours. Which, I don't know about you, but I've definitely been there. Um, so, would it give you, like, I want to use it in, in the lecture time? Oh, yeah, yeah. But I would love it if it gives me, like, a couple minutes warning. Did you notice the little pop-up at the bottom? Uh, no. Oh, okay, yeah, there's a little pop-up that comes up about you know, five, ten seconds before it's about to take over. Uh -huh. And you can, at that point, you can say, you know what, never mind, uh, remind me in three minutes, or just skip this break. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Even from here, you can just hit end break and it'll go back. Break, break timer? Yes. And I personally find this super useful just to remember to do my physio exercises. I've got a yoga mat on my desk. I keep forgetting the, the lectures, like right? three hour long lecture. Oh, geez, yeah. yeah. It, it's easy to do. Mm. And on this one, you can set how long you want the breaks to be, when you want them to be. You can even be like, hey, I only work during these hours, so only set up the break timer during that. Which for you might be helpful if you're like, I only have my lectures during this time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I wouldn't break that particular time. Like, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So this is a, a Chrome extension? Yeah, this is a Chrome extension, and guaranteed similar things exist other places. Hmm. And it will pop up even if I'm running, let's say, PowerPoint, but I have a Chrome it'll uh, pop minimized. Up. Yeah, it'll pop up in the background. Mm -hmm. So I noticed there was this big teal window going on in the background. Like, all right, let's click that. No. Yeah. My goal for this was everybody gets hopefully at least one tool they can use. This might be that one. What's it called? Break timer. Yeah. I'm I'm good with it, yeah. I uh, I made the mistake of showing the cat thing to a friend of mine who's very into cats. And uh, you can actually share the cats that you find, so it'll send a little link that you know pops up the same cat. So like for the next week, every couple hours I'll be like, look at this one. <laughs> it's like it's tiny and in space. Okay, yeah. What was that called? The cat. Uh, tabby cat. Tabby cat. Uh, that is the end of the hour that we were still all of the links to all the different tools that we're talking about. I love that one of your bookmarks is live kitten rescue. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's Kim. I have to thank for that. Oh, that's I can't remember what it goes to. I've only opened it a couple times. Um, I find it takes up too much real estate to just constantly have kittens in the bottom screen. I wouldn't get work I have a little minor for a while too. It's called like a rest timer or something like that. So 
same kind of thing. Like you're at, at whenever, so like let's say you had it every hour or so, every hour screen would just go three, <laughs> <laughs> and then it would last like five ten seconds, yeah. and then it would go close. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> awkward if you're showing somebody something on your computer at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which on that note, you can disable this for extended periods of time. You're like, hey, for some reason, I don't want to have random breaks in the middle of my presentation. <laughs> but you're more productive if you do take breaks. Mm -hmm. All right, back at it. Okay. So I'm really hoping. There we go. So another handy thing in file stream is. Microsoft Documents, as you're probably aware, you can't have two people working on the same file at once. It doesn't work that way. Somebody saves, the other person saves, and the first one gets cut out. File stream is a handy thing that can tell you whether or not somebody else is accessing that Microsoft document. So which is why, at our little bottom right here, we have a thing that says save to edit. Because nobody else is working on this right now. If somebody else tries to open up this document, well, I've got it open, it'll be like, hey, don't change anything, because this is getting worked on. Does it tell you who's working on it? Or who's trying to access it? I cannot remember. I think it does. Uh, I think you can access that information, though. So this is for uh, Google Docs. Oh, sorry. File um, stream, yeah. Word Docs, though, that you're opening from your computer, not using through Google Docs. This is Word Docs that I was opening on my computer through Google File Stream. Right. Because, yeah, all the, that was not actually saved on my computer. Right. So you could just create the Google, the Word Docs page, Google Docs. Yeah, you could just start. You could just do everything in Google Docs, and then it'll just automatically be a lot easier. But this particular case was files saved somewhere on a server, so few people have access to that yeah. server, and they have like option to edit it at any moment, right? Yeah. So that's the case. Yeah. So yeah. Once again, this is all done through yeah Google File Stream, and then down into stuff. Just a handy feature they introduced recently. Okay, so we have covered break timer. One last thing. This doesn't work so well on projectors, but when I'm working on my desk, I actually keep my monitors at 70% brightness. And there's another tool I use called Flux. What Flux does is it makes everything a little friendlier on the eyes, a little less blue, a little less harsh. And the whole point of it is just to make it a little easier to look at. They, the purpose behind this is to actually set it up so that it matches when daylight time is, but you can just override it if you feel like, and like, hey, I want things a little dimmer. And once again, you can disable that if you want, blah, blah, blah. So we have just covered Autotext Expander G Suite Training, Giphy, Break Timer, Allure Mipsum Generator, Adblock Plus, Tabby Cat, Gmail Boomerang, Canned Responses, the Computed Diff Bookmark, and the Meet Yipsum Bookmark, the Asana and LastPass Services, and the programs Greenshot, FileStream, and Flux. So those are a bunch of tools I use basically daily to help me work a little bit quicker. Hopefully you found something in there that you're like, hey, that looks good. I want to try that out. Probably it was the break timer. People seem pretty excited about that. I don't blame you. It's great. Do we have any questions? Does that tabby cat really save you time? Or just <laughs> <laughs> it helps with working better. Yeah. Okay, working better. Yeah. yeah. Adds a little bit of cheer. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.